Our Excellence presents Jewels from the Holy Quran, a series of lectures by Mufti Ismail ibn Musa Mink. الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Complete blessings and salutations be upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and all his companions and all of us May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless us in this holy month of Ramadan and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى grant us all improvement in every single way Amen Honored ulama, beloved brothers Dearest sisters and listeners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the one who is intelligent in the opening verses that we read tonight. And Allah speaks of ulul albab, those who have brains, those who have intellect. Who are they? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them in this Quran and He says, الَّذِينَ يُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِ اللَّهِ وَلَا يَنْقُضُونَ الْمِيثَاقَ والذين يصلون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويخشون ربهم ويخافون سوء الحساب والذين صبروا ابتغاء وجه ربهم وأقاموا الصلاة وأنفقوا مما رزقناهم سرا وعلانية ويدرؤون بالحسنة السيئة Allah says they are the ones who fulfill their promises. They do not break their covenant that they made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They understand that they have made a pledge to Allah in terms of the iman. And they will fulfill the commands and stay away from the prohibitions. And they will not be from amongst those who sever relations and ties that Allah has asked to maintain. Rather they will be from amongst those who strive and struggle to maintain the relations that Allah has commanded to maintain. May Allah make us from amongst those who can solve our family issues. And may Allah make us from amongst those who can unite the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to do that. Then he continues to say that they are the ones who bear lots of patience and they are the ones who engage in salah, who fulfill their salah. The five daily salah, extremely important. They have so much benefit inshallah. One day may Allah grant us the opportunity to go through some of the benefits of salah. Not the spiritual ones. Those are definitely there. But we'd like to go through the medical benefits of salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that day inshallah. We need to be steadfast with salah because those who are intellectuals, those who are intelligent, Allah says they establish their salah, they give alms to the poor, they give to the poor in secret and in open so that they can encourage others. When they give in secret, they give it because they want only Allah to know. And when they give it in public, they give it with the true intention but to encourage others to say if he could give, we can also give inshallah. May Allah make us from amongst those. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them as those who shall earn a very very good abode inshallah. May Allah grant us all jannah. And the opposite is also mentioned where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ يَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَن يُوصَلَ وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ اللَّعْنَةِ وَلَهُمْ سُوءٌ Those who sever the relations, who break the relations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded for them, what will be the outcome? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they will be cursed. May Allah not do that to us. And they will have a very bad abode, obviously, in the akhirah. They will not be in a good place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good place. And may Allah safeguard us from destroying the relations that He has asked us to maintain. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the dhikr of Allah. What is the meaning of dhikr of Allah? When we say, let's engage in dhikr. Yes, it does include the tasbihat, the tahlilat, the takbirat, the, the ta'zim of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, and so on. That is part of the dhikr of Allah. But more than anything, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means the consciousness, the remembering of Allah. Whenever there is a sin to be committed, someone remembers Allah. That is the dhikr of Allah. And they don't commit the sin. They become conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. 
and from amongst those who remember Allah at all times. When there is something good to be done, Allah is remembered. And through that, it encourages us to do the good. It makes us do the good for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the dhikr as well is the Qur'an. Why? Because the Qur'an teaches us what is right and wrong. Had we not known what was right and wrong, how were we going to, en how were we going to engage in that which was right? And how were we going to abstain from that which was wrong? If someone told us to eat a banana, for example, and we didn't know what a banana looked like, we might go to the shops and buy an apple. It's a fact. And we might think it's a banana. The same applies. When you don't know what is wrong, then how are you going to abstain from that which is wrong? We first need to learn what is wrong. One of the scholars has said that I learned what was wrong in order to stay away from it because the one who doesn't know what is wrong won't even be able to stay away from it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that understanding. So Allah says, those who believe, they achieve comfort of the heart through the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For definitely, it is through the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the heart can be comforted. The heart will be at peace and at ease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take away all the difficulties that we have in our hearts and minds and souls. Every one of us is going through different difficulties, different issues, different problems. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your issues and mine. And He knows the issues of the whole ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all in our different problems and issues. Remember, it is all a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nobody on this globe who does not have any problem at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates problems so that we can turn to Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the turning to Him at all times. So that is as far as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how the dhikr has an impact on the heart. If you hear the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, automatically it nourishes the, the soul. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. After that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about something very important. But before I get to that, let me go further down the Qur'an and mention one verse of the Qur'an. Allah says, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ We will continue showing mankind the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the horizons and in themselves until there comes a time when they have made so many discoveries that they will find that the Qur'an is definitely the truth. What does this mean? This means the Qur'an has verses where scientific discoveries year after year will come to prove that what the Qur'an says is the truth. Let me give you one example. There was a time when people said, the scientists said, the sun does not move. And the Qur'an says, وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي The sun moves. The Qur'an did not discuss how much it moves, how it moves, but all the Qur'an says is the sun moves. So there were some people in the 50s and 60s who said, no, the Qur'an has made a mistake, na'udhu billah. And the sun does not move. Later on, science adjusted itself to say, no, the sun moves, but very little. Well, who said it, it moves a lot? The Qur'an just says it moves. It doesn't discuss how much it moves, but now science had to admit that yes, the Qur'an is the truth. Allahu Akbar. In the same way, there are other examples. One of the verses I am reading now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا نَأْتِي الْأَرْضَ نَنْقُصُهَا مِنْ أَطْرَافِهَا Do they not see that we come to the earth and we clip it from the edges? We clip the earth from the edges. That is the literal translation of this verse. What is meant by clipping the earth from the edges? So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, some of them said it means that there will be a large population and they will die. So we will notice people around us dying and that means the earth is being clipped from its edge and from the edges of the earth. Yes, that is also an interpretation. Later on, the ulama and mufassirin who went into the tafsir also looked at the scientific discoveries. Take a look at the water content of the earth and the land content of the earth and the ratio between the two. Now you have the depletion of the ozone layer, and you have the defrosting of the icebergs. And what is happening? The land is becoming less, it's getting clipped. So much so that I have read an article where it says, Europe might be flooded, Europe might be underwater after a hundred years. Who knows? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us this year. If you read some of the articles of the news, they are saying that there are certain places where 
the sea is reclaiming the land. That is the word being used. How is that happening? Here Allah is saying that don't they see, Allahu Akbar, that we come to the earth and we are clipping it from its edges, making it smaller and smaller. That's one interpretation. Yet another interpretation. The earth a long time ago, seemingly very, very distant. If you wanted to travel from Makkah to Medina, an average time would take you eight days. Average time, eight days. Allahu Akbar. Today, not eight hours. Not even four hours. 30 minutes by aircraft. Allahu Akbar. 30 minutes by aircraft. In fact, within 24 hours, I can move and you can move to any corner or island of the globe with an aircraft. And very soon it will be even quicker than that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Communications are so advanced that nowadays, what do we call the globe? Don't we refer to it as a global village? Allahu Akbar. We refer to it as a global village. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we come to the earth and clip its edges, making it smaller and smaller. In size it stays the same. But it is now referred to as a global village. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. If I'd like to speak to someone in the Fiji Islands, I just have to pick up the phone here and now and dial a number and I will get through to them. This was impossible a long time ago. If we spoke about it, people would think we were mentally disturbed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So, there is a verse. Then after that, Surah Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commences it by mentioning why He has revealed the Qur'an. What is the purpose and the aim of this Qur'an? Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka li tukhrija nasa min al-dhulumati ila al-nuri bi-idhni rabbihim. The book we have revealed. Why? In order to take people out of the darkness and bring them to the light. Take them out of the paths of shaitan and bring them to the one siratul mustaqim, the one straight path by the will of Allah, by the will of their Rabb. Why does Allah say by the will of their Rabb? Because sometimes there are some people you can read the whole Quran to them, they won't bat an eyelid. Whereas the Sahaba radiallahu anhum who were unlettered, one verse, one verse made them cry. Take a look at Umar ibn al-Khattabi radiallahu anhu, one of the arch enemies of Islam prior to his acceptance of Islam. He had to read a few verses as a non-Muslim. He read a few verses. He began to tremble. Where is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Take me to him. I want to go to him and declare the faith now. What a miracle. With us, we read one completion after the other completion and we haven't even been tickled by the verses of the Qur'an. May Allah not do that to us. We need this yaqeen. When someone reads the verses of the Qur'an, our hairs should stand. And we should be feeling this is our book that came from Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the understanding. In fact, a verse that we read this evening, in the next surah, in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the protection of the Qur'an. And Allah says, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ I'm sure a lot of us know the meaning of this verse. We are the ones who have revealed this book and we will protect it, we will keep it in its original pristine form. No matter what people try to do to it, there will always be some way or another that this Qur'an will come back. Allahu Akbar. Now, we memorize the Qur'an. We should understand if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and let's listen to this statement, it's a deep statement. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that He is going to protect the Qur'an, then if any one of us has memorized it, Allah has to protect us in order to protect the Qur'an inside us. That is something we must understand. So, the Huffad, they are not protecting the Qur'an. The Qur'an is protecting them. Allahu Akbar. This is one thing we need to understand and get straight. So each one of us, don't we all as Muslims memorize even a portion of the Quran? I'm sure every one of us knows Surah Al-Fatiha. All of us know Surah Al-Ikhlas. All of us probably know Surah Al-Kawthar. Alhamdulillah. So to a certain degree, Allah has used us also to protect this Quran. Let's thank Allah for that. And let's make an intention to try and memorize one verse a day so that at least through the barakah of that learning of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be protected. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to make mention of the fact that every time he sends a prophet, and we spoke about this a few days back, he sends a prophet in the language of the people that, he, that prophet is sent to. There is no prophet who requires an interpreter. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ We have only sent prophets, or we have not sent prophets except 
in the language of those whom they were sent to. So that the issues can be manifest and clear. You know and I know that when there is a lecture in our language, we understand it and it has an impact on us. When there is a lecture in another language that has to be interpreted, half of its spirituality might be lost just through the interpretation. Allah says here, لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ One of the reasons why it is important to know the language of the people you want to address is so that you can make clear to them what is in your heart. And the message that you have to deliver, you deliver it in the best language, simple language which everybody can understand. And, and it will be appealing inshallah to everyone May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Beautify for us the message of the Quran So that it can get to our hearts And we feel like practicing upon it Amin. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Speaks about how Those who are ungrateful Allah will take away What he has given them وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَئِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ The declaration of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone who thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has, for what she has, for what they have been given, for the level, the status, the spouse, the family they were brought into, the financial level, the level of health. If anyone thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that, Allah will grant them increase inshaAllah. But anyone who is ungrateful and starts comparing their lives with those who are better than them in terms of materialistic items, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says such people are ungrateful. They don't realize that we have given them whatever we have decided to distribute to them. Rather than being thankful, they want to now compare and compete. It happens sometimes in marriage, where a person who's suffering a little bit of turbulence goes to tell their spouse, look at those people, they are so happy. Yet they don't understand, those people are worse, but they are good at covering up. Allahu Akbar. So don't compare your situation with someone else's. They might be comparing theirs with yours at the same time and you don't know. Rather turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Ya Allah, alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. I praise you upon every condition and I seek refuge from the condition of those who will be entering the fire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So it is important that we realize if we want to increase in whatever we have, we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we thank Allah? Not only by tongue, but even by our deeds. When we obey the commands, automatically we are thanking Allah. When we stay away from the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, automatically we are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, whoever is ungrateful, even what we've given them, we will snatch it back. There is a possibility. <laughs> if you are ungrateful, my punishment is severe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not punish us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about shaitan and how shaitan tells us you know Allah promised you a solid promise and you knew that Allah's promise is the truth and I made an empty promise but you decided to come towards my direction I did not have any control over you besides the fact that I just called you and you answered وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ shaitan will say the day when everything is complete on the day of qiyamah إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ Allah promised you a solid promise. And I just gave you a, an empty promise. And you decided to go against Allah's commands for my sake. وَمَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا, إلا أَنْ دَعُوتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ He says, I had no control over you. Shaitan will tell us. But I just called you and you came rushing towards me. So don't blame me, blame yourselves. Look at how shaitan will disassociate himself from those whom he, whom, who have followed him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us followers of shaitan. Remember this world is very short. Rather than following our lusts and desires, we'd rather follow what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the akhirah, we will have whatever we desire. But if we decide that we want whatever we desire here, then in the akhirah, we may not have what we desire. May Allah not do that to us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verses speaks about the fact that He has bestowed us with everything we want, everything we need, the air Allah has given us, our noses, our eyes, our ears, everything Allah has given us, so many gifts, everything around us Allah has created for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, twice in the verses that we read tonight, وَإِن اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظَلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ 
if you are to count or try to count the gifts that Allah has bestowed upon you, O oh man, you will never ever be able to circumscribe them. Never. You won't be able to bring them together. You won't be able to write them down. Impossible. Allah says definitely man is very oppressive and they are very very ungrateful. May Allah not make us from amongst those. Let us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Him to accept our good deeds and make us steadfast, inshallah, on the right path. And we must promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the evil that we have been engaged in for so many years, we will put an end to it here and now for the sake of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter speaks about Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. This is Surah Ibrahim. After Surah Al Hijr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And Allah says, he left his family members in Mecca. At the time when it was barren, there was nothing. It was an empty valley. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of a certain dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. He says, رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ فَجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِّنَ النَّاسِ تَهُوِي إِلَيْهِمْ وَارْزُقُهُمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ Oh Allah, I have left my family there so that I can come and obey you, so that I can go out for your sake and I can earn your pleasure through worshipping you according to your instruction. So therefore, I ask you, Ya Allah, let the hearts of the people incline towards this place. Towards which place? Talking of Makkah al Mukarramah. And grant them with samara, grant them with fruits, with vegetables, with crops at all times. Yes, this dua was for his family members, but for anyone who came there after that. What about us? Can't we feel the response of this dua that it is positive? Everyone's heart inclines towards Makkah al Mukarramah. If I were to tell you that you know what, for 500 rands we can go to Makkah, I'm sure the whole masjid would be empty here because we would all be gone there. Alhamdulillah. Everyone's heart. If it was cheap, Alhamdulillah, we would all be there. Our hearts are there right now as we speak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us there again and again. And may He make us from amongst those whom when we go there, we can promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to turn to Him. And we don't go there and disgrace ourselves and come back the same criminals we were religiously. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a very important issue regarding those who are oppressors. The lesson is for the oppressors and for those who have been oppressed. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ Don't ever think Allah has forgotten about those who are oppressors. They might oppress, but Allah has given them respite up to a certain day, face to face they shall be dealt with. Allahu Akbar. So Allah tells the oppressors, watch out. If you keep on oppressing, remember, it's not that we have forgotten about you, but we are giving you respite, one day we will deal with you. When that day, the fixed appointed time comes, and Allah is telling those who are oppressed, don't worry about those who are oppressing you. One day, we shall deal with them. So the lesson is for both. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all acceptance. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, in fact, Surah Al-Hijr is after Surah Ibrahim. Al-Hijr is referring to the rocky lands. It is said that these are the rocky lands of Petra in the southern part of Jordan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed the people there. And Allah makes mention of it here. But in Surah Al-Hijr, Allah speaks of the enemy, Iblis, again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Thereafter, that the people of Hijr had belied the messenger. And then we destroyed them. And after that, at the end, there is another very, very important statement. Didn't I say moments ago that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue showing us signs within ourselves and in the horizons? Listen to another verse. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ the address is to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know that the statements made against you by your enemies, the statements made against you by your enemies, is narrowing your chest. What does that mean? Do you know that lately, more recently, 
the, some of the doctors have gone into a certain study, the study of cholesterol and the angina attacks that people suffer with. And there is a new discovery, it's not very difficult to actually find it on the internet, which states that cholesterol is not necessarily caused by food. But in fact, sometimes, and one of the biggest contributing factors of high cholesterol, which is the tightening of the chest, you can feel it in your chest, is stress. Allahu Akbar. When a person is worried, when they have stress, what type of stress? Here, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being instructed, don't stress about what they are telling you. You know that it's lies. You know it is absolutely absurd what they are uttering. Don't let it bother you. Don't worry. Carry on. So, this verse proves to us that stress is also a cause of high cholesterol. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Ask the doctors who are in this field. They will confirm that. Allahu Akbar. This medicine did not know until a few years back. But the Quran spoke about it, that we know that those statements are tightening your chest. The tightening of the chest, what does it mean? The thickening of the blood, and that we nowadays call the severe of it an angina attack. May Allah protect us all. So what is the solution? Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can leave us without a solution? He says, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ Praise Allah on every condition. Don't be upset. Don't be angry. Thank Allah for everything He's ever given you. Goodness comes towards you. Thank Allah. Something you might regard as evil befalls you. Thank Allah. It could have been worse. It was tailor-made for you. Bear sabr. Definitely sabr is an act of worship. Sabr is such, a, such an act of worship that Allah says, Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. Allah is with those who bear sabr. When can you bear sabr? Only when you've got a problem. Which means, if you have a problem, Allah chose you specially to engage in a huge act of worship that will get you close to Him. Had it not been for that problem, you would have never ever been able to gain closeness to Allah through this ibadah known as sabr. Allahu Akbar. So we must not stress when something that we feel is bad befalls us. We must thank Allah. Ya Allah, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to engage in sabr. The best of creation engaged in sabr. Who are we? Allahu Akbar. So Allah says, Praise Allah on every condition. That is the first solution. The second one. Find yourself in the position of sujood as much as possible. Why the position of sujood? I told you there is some medical benefit for the salah. Look, Allah has brought it here today already. One of the points. Sujood is the only posture that a human being can easily get into. Where the brain is lower than the heart. So, the oxygenated blood that flows, that is pumped from the heart up into the brain in order to get into the rest of the organs of the body, so that those organs can function correctly, that oxygenated blood needs absolutely no effort to get to the brain, because gravity pulls it down, because the brain is now below the heart. Allahu Akbar Kabira. That is why we should be taking a little bit longer in sujood. Instead of saying Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la thrice, let's say it five times inshallah. The other two will help us in a different way. Allahu Akbar. Look at how now we are nodding our heads because now we can see the medical benefit, isn't it? Allahu Akbar. There, is, there are a lot of benefits of sujood, wallahi. So, yes, when I say that is the only posture that you can easily get into. Because there they are other postures but quite difficult. Like for example, if we had, say for example... A stress room, and this is just imaginary obviously, where we had little strings hanging from the top, and every time people were stressing, they were tied from their legs, so that their brains could now be below their hearts. Allahu Akbar, it sounds so silly and foolish. But anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us as a gift salah. This is why salah is a gift. It will help me more than anything else. Let's engage in our five salah a day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that easy for us. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the bee in Surah An-Nahl. And the message of Surah An-Nahl is very, very interesting. The bee, as small as it is, as small as it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how it is inspired, where to go. And do you know when you have a hive and there is a queen bee in there, Allah inspires the queen bee which flower to go and get the nectar from. It is haram in the sharia of the bees. It is haram for any bee under the, under the, uh, the queen to go to another flower besides that which the queen has dictated. And do you know what is the punishment of any bee that decides to derive, uh, meaning any, any bee that decides to derive any form of comfort and benefit from 
a flower besides the flower that that particular queen has decided is executed. That is why if you go, and those who study that the bees will know this, if you go to any hive, you will notice at the bottom of the hive dead bees. What was their sin? They came back with nectar of another flower. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inspired the bee for our sake. Allah says, مُخْتَلِفًا alwanu. Honey is different colors. You will find honey, different flavors and colors naturally from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's inspiration to the queen bee. And any bee that goes to another flower. And for your information, a bee derives a lot of pleasure when it goes to extract the nectar from a flower. So if it looks at another flower besides the flower that it is supposed to be looking at and goes and derives pleasure from that flower that is not its own flower, it is executed. Allahu Akbar Kabira. I don't want to call it the zina of the bee, but in actual fact, if we think about it, it is deriving the benefit from a different flower. May Allah grant insan that understanding. When Allah has created someone pure in terms of a spouse for us, we must never ever look elsewhere. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even amongst the bees, there is a lesson that He has kept for us. Allahu Akbar Kabira. Look at these examples in the Quran. Amazing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about that here in this Quran. And in fact in Surah Al-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about so many favors that He has bestowed upon us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us also that you know your children are actually a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Allah says that there are some people they get upset when they are informed of a female child. That is haram, absolutely haram. Listen to what Allah says in the verses we read tonight. وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا وَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ When one of them is given the good news, the glad tidings of a female child, you find that their faces become darkened and they become angry. Why do I have a girl? Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us. Whatever Allah has given you, He knows what He has given you. We need to thank Allah for the girl child. The girl child brings about much more barakah than anything else. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated that those who have three girls, and in some narrations more and some narrations less, and look after them and get them married off to good good spouses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them Jannah solely because they have looked after somebody else's property. Allahu Akbar. Some, meaning girls who will be going elsewhere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that understanding. Then Allah says, يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْمِ مِن سُوءِ مَا بُشِّرَ بِهِ Such people, they want to hide away from the community. They are shy of the fact that now they are fathers of a female child. So they want to hide away from community. So that when people ask you, what you got, a boy or a girl? You don't have to say, oh, I've got a girl. Allahu Akbar. It is haram in the sharia to even feel a little bit sad when you are told that there is a girl child. Rather, we should be so, so happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bring lots and lots of goodness and even get us through to Jannah. With that, may Allah grant us Jannah in this month of Ramadan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.